uh, congratulations on the new deal. Um, wanted to ask you from your own standpoint, why it was so important. Looks like you're probably gonna be able to finish your career here. Why that's so important to you, number one. Number two, you know, it's, it's, it was Pat, it was Chris Jones, now you. I mean, obviously the Chiefs are stepping up financially to some extent here, but why, what's going on here? Is it just the winning or what else, what are else the reasons for guys wanting to stay with the Chiefs right now? Um, I think there's a, there's a lot of reasons, man. And it's uh, it, one is because we got great guys in the locker room. We got great guys in the facility, great people in the facility. Um, and it's just a, overall, it's a, it's a fun atmosphere every single time you come to work. And uh, guys don't want to leave that. Guys want to keep building off of that. And um, it's a beautiful thing when you have uh, ownership, trust in you, um, want to make change with you in terms of uh, the season and, 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 and uh, the community. Um, and then on top of that, just going out there and playing football with guys who, uh, who come to work every single day and, and uh, fight their tail off for you, man. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And um, you know what? This, uh, this community, um, Kansas City, I love you, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm going to be here for the next six years. Let's go to Steve Walls. Go ahead, Steve. Can you hear me? We got you. All right, cool. Hey, Travis, how you doing, man? What's up, Steve? Hey, there are a select number of players in this franchise history, Tony Gonzalez being one of them, uh, who are revered by fans. This gives you an opportunity to get there. How much does that mean to you to be able to get your name on that list? Um, I'm just uh, – <laughs> man, it's uh, – everyone's always been trying to compare me to Tony since I got here just because of the position. Um, and you know what? He's a Hall of Famer, man. And it, there's a reason why he's a Hall of Famer is because he did it the right way every single time. You know, he was out here in this community trying to make the community better and trying to show everybody his face, get out from under the face mask and, uh, and make a difference. And um, that's what I'm trying to do every single year. Um, I'm teaming up with Operation Breakthrough on, on some more things. Uh, so, so we got some, uh, some news coming for you guys with that. But um, outside of just, uh, just being a great competitor, man, um, I've tried to model my, uh, my professionalism off of what Tony has already started here. Uh, because I knew it was something, it was a model of success. And um, I can thank Tony and uh, everybody for comparing me to Tony to, to, to make me want to up the ante every single time. Let's go to Harold Koontz. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Travis, how are you doing, man? Uh, congratulations as well. With all the, you know, talk of run it back and everything, you know, and you getting the extension, Chris and Mahomes, I'm just wondering the conversations that you had, you know, being with those guys and knowing that you're going to be with these guys for a long time, just how fortunate do you feel that you've gotten in the position where you you have consistency both in the locker room, out in the field, you know, out hanging with those guys? Just how fortunate are you to have that consistency? Man, it's a, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. Like I said, the, uh, the front office, uh, Brett Veach, um, Coach Reed, Clark Hunt, uh, Mark Donovan, the guys that, that really put this organization and bring everyone together and get everybody on the same page. Um, we got all the trust in the world that those guys are going to get it done and, uh, and make, it, make it worth our while while we're here. And uh, can't thank them enough for the opportunities that we've had up to date. And you know what? We're making, the, uh, we're making our effort every single day to make the, uh, the best yet to come, man. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Trav, congratulations. Um, something we've seen with the tight end position over the past decade is it grow into this offensive weapon position. And there's other great tight ends in the league, Gronk, Ertz, for example. What's been different about you and set you apart is just the consistency, um, you know, the four years in a row of 1,000 yards or more. What do you think has been the key to that success when it comes to being able to do it every single year? Um. Well, being very fortunate that I'm on the field, that's the biggest thing, man. I've, uh, I've been very fortunate to have um, great teammates around me, great coaches to put me in positions to succeed. And then on top of that, uh, great athletic trainers in the trainer room. You can't, you can't uh, underestimate or throw them, uh, you know, leave them out of the, out of the puzzle, man, because uh, rehab and, and keeping guys on the field is arguably half the, half the job in the NFL um, because we know how, much, how physically demanding it is. So it's just um, I've been very fortunate to have this kind of this uh, – this circle of success around me and um, it just keeps getting better and better knowing that uh, the, the front office and coach Reed are bringing in guys that are going to help us win. All right, guys, uh, we got our final four hands up. Let's go to Karen first. Go ahead, Karen. Hey, Travis, congratulations. Two questions. One, what was it like putting on the pads today? Just like riding a bike. 
And two, coach just said new wrinkles being put in. We saw how ingenious you guys were at the Super Bowl. Are you guys going to do even more of that kind of fun stuff this year? Um, I don't, I don't know. It's uh, right now we're, we're, we're in the beginning stages of camp. So we're running a lot of the, a lot of the installs that are kind of like the base packages. So right now it's just, uh, it's keying in on, on, you know, what our rules are and everything like that. But it's, uh, you never know with this, this mentality of this offense. I mean, the, the skill outside at receiver, um, at running back, you know, it's, um, it's second to none. So that, that, that gives the coaches freedom, uh, especially when you got a quarterback back there that can handle and absorb as much information as, as you can get them. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a fortunate situation. It's, it's like it's a, it's a never ending uh, circle that just, keeps, that just keeps going round and round and getting better and better. So and the, pads, the pads today were fun. It was, it was good to get out there and hit somebody and, and try and get some uh, fundamentals back down. Let's go to Seren. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, Travis, uh, I know this is not your uh, first big money contract, right? So uh, the complacency side of things, you've, you've fought through that, the idea of like getting paid and now, okay, you let down. But a lot of guys are getting paid. Have you guys had discussions? Have you talked to Are you the, the guy giving everybody directions on how to keep your edge and how to keep that hunger? And, and just kind of, if you could, then after that overall, just everybody's back, right? And I know run it back is the theme and, and everybody likes that, but Usually teams that go back to the Super Bowl have some turnover and maybe you know, some people speculated it's the new guys that don't have a ring that maybe drive that hunger. So could you just uh, tell me why you believe you guys have that, that hunger and, and what you've done to tell some of the guys that are coming into those big contracts? For the you, can first see time? It, you can see it right away. I mean, we've, uh, we've got a pretty good understanding of how to, how to get there, right? We did it last year. Um, we have great leaders in this, in this locker room. And when I say that, I mean, it's every single day. It's not like it's it, one day, it's somebody else. Every single day we got the same guys uh, push, leading the charge and um, not settling for anything less than, than what we did last year or, or then even more so ante it up and, uh, and, and double down on everything we did last year. So it's a, it's a mindset and it's a, it's, it's a, everyone's just eager to get out there and, and get to work. And as long as we're working our tails off every single day, um, we got the players to make plays on Sunday. We just have to put in the work to get down the timing of things, make sure our fundamentals are there, and then just go out there and have fun on Sundays. Let's go to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hello, Travis. Uh, congratulations on the new deal. Uh, I have two questions for you. The first is, and you mentioned uh, Clark Hunt's sort of uh, influence and impact on you guys. In terms of handling out these contracts, in terms of keeping the core together, uh, what does it say that that since you've been around the organization for eight years now, what Clark's impact on the on the franchise has been, particularly uh, the last couple of years, in terms of identifying the right guys to put together a championship team? And secondly, uh, you mentioned the idea of obviously wanting to play with Patrick to to really thrive in your guys' partnership together. From a mental standpoint, what is it about playing with Patrick? that unlocks your game as you sort of see how Patrick uh, thinks about sort of the offense through the field and in the film room? Um, well, I'll answer the, the Clark Hunt question first, man. The, um, you know, it's not uh, very fortunate, man. It's not like this in every single organization, every single city. Um, I've heard the stories of how it could get real bad to stories of how it's, it's pretty nice. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with where I am because of the guy that, that, that's up front. Uh, leading the charge, and that's Clark Hunt, man. And that the Hunt family and what they've done, uh, bringing in Coach Andy Reid, I thought that was his best move ever in life was to bring in Andy Reid, man, because what he does to an organization um, is uh, is taking him to the Super Bowl. I mean, it's clear to see his track record and what he's done here um, and what he's going to do in the future. And uh, it's, um, that's, that's the biggest thing is uh, getting the right people in place and then on top of that, trusting in those people. And I think that's one thing that uh, – Clark Hunt has done an unbelievable job of is he's trusted the people that he has in place. Uh, and that's as players as well. And, um, you know, Pat is a, Pat's a special guy out there on the field and we're seeing it even more and more. So it's all unfolding every single year on what he, what his limits are and what he can and can't do. Um, the can't do's are, are, are very f quickly starting to get smaller and smaller on the list, man. And it's, uh, it's cool to see him grow. And he's such a competitor that it, it never stops. And that's the one thing about uh, these practices is that um, everyone's talking about don't get complacent, man. When you have guys coming out here competing their tails off uh, over, the, over five yards, you know, over, over three yards, two yards in practice, 
uh, just the type of determination and mentality that brings to every single play, every single down, every single period in practice. That's that all that translates to the game, man. And it's um, what it does is it allows you to play free and it allows you to play football. That's uh, that's almost like you're in the backyard playing. Let's go. Last one, Darren. Go ahead. Hey, Travis. How you doing? All right. All right. So uh, a couple questions for you. One, you know, do you all as players kind of have conversations about how you all can kind of stick around and stay together, uh, you know, knowing that there is a high turnover in the NFL and that you all with new contracts or contracts ending wanting to stay together? You know, do you all kind of talk about amongst each other how to work that out? And then second, um, how do you all as leaders hold, hold yourself and teammates accountable? For example, uh, we saw what happened in Seattle with the rookie trying to sneak a, uh, trying to sneak a female in. Now, I know you all don't stay in a hotel at the moment, but how do you all kind of hold yourself accountable and teammates accountable to make sure that they're doing the proper things and the right things so uh, situations like what happened in Seattle doesn't arrive here in Kansas City? Yeah. Um, well, the first thing is uh... – I think I think we all knew then we trusted the uh, the front office, Coach Brett Veach, Coach Reed, um, Clark Hunt, all the guys to be able to um, keep the core, and uh, we trusted that they were going to be able to make it make sense for all the players, which they did. They they held their end of the bargain, and and we're so we're very much thankful that uh, that we still got the core with us going into this year, um, and it looks like for a few years ahead as well. Um, in terms of uh, holding each other accountable, man, every uh, every every office is different, every team is different, the discipline is different, different leaders. Um, I think we have a very good situation here to where um, we have the right guys in this facility that are making the right decisions. Um, I firmly believe that. Now, is it? it am I going to say that nobody on this squad is going to get COVID? I mean, it's a, it's it's a crazy world right now. You know, you can't predict those kind of things. I just think that um, you know what I mean. Everyone right now, at least here in Kansas City seems like they're doing the right things because we all got one goal in mind and that's to play football and play it at a high level every Sunday.